The great thing about being in charge of the controls is that you get to choose when the show starts, not when Paul is just a... wield that thing like a, a weapon of mass destruction. <clears throat> it's like a roller coaster for Paul, except I'm the guy behind like the little booth that <laughs> hits the, the big go button. Roller coasters don't usually stop halfway down the hill. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly and without any warning. Yeah. Yeah, make his head <laughs> hit the front of the car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fine. Yeah, so, it's, it's Duo 2. Two, a lot two, of Android noise today. Two, no, duo it's, two. It's, so this is OG Duo. Mm -hmm. There's there were some things about this that I was and this is um, Obsidian Black or what I call Satan's best device to give to reviewers because it is impossible to keep this thing clean or like take any sort of photo of it without a reflect. Like I was about yeah. to publish a photo and then I realized that there was a giant blow up unicorn reflecting off the display that was my daughter's. Um, right. But, I mean, it's, like, my literal title of the, of the review or preview, whatever you want to call it, is better hardware, same productivity. Like, it's the, it's, it's. So, now that we're a year plus into this, uh, what massive productivity gains have emerged from the community that justify this thing? Like I said. I'll same... give you, you get 10, 12 minutes to go through all, because I know it's a big list. I said same productivity, Paul. <laughs> I said same. But so here, first yeah. off, it's physically bigger. I, I did not realize this. So yeah. it might be hard to see here, but if you look real close, like you're not going to be able to see it, but the hinges, like the little things yeah, are yeah. larger. There, there's that gap there so that they can do that little side view thing, which you can kind of see is lit up right there. Um, yeah. Then there's this thing, which... Yeah. Right. I, I got to tell you, I don't know if it was a good choice. Right. First off, it's they should have I don't know what they would have done. I mean, I don't know how you fix that. So uh, cuz it's because of the dual screens. Right. So here's here's part of the awkwardness. So so great. Cameras on the back. Triple camera setup. Triple camera, which they're okay. They they are not iPhone level stuff. They're oh, they're right. okay. But here's yeah. the thing. So I want to take a picture of Paul. If I, like you got to hold it like this. Like like you're in right. church, like reading a sermon. Um, but then the the problem here, Paul, the, the problem here, which took oh, me boy. far too long to realize, is you want it in 16 by 9. You don't want it tall. You want it wide. So you're actually taking photos like this. Uh, because... Now, when you hold it like that, is there anything on the lower screen that actually acts as a shutter button or something that makes it a little less uncomfortable? Because that would... You know, that'd be okay. The other thing you could do is open it all the way, right? And have it just be a big flat like, slap. Yeah. Then you look like an iPad idiot taking photos. Which, hold on. Any... No, you can't actually open it as a giant slap. Oh, yes, you can. No, you can't. <laughs> okay. No, it doesn't actually put the... Yeah. I didn't even try that. But no, it doesn't put... Like, the on-screen button is still on this oh, one. That's awkward. And so then you flip it here. And it, yeah, it's still on there. I also had the camera app crash twice on me while using it. So there's that. Uh, other changes is, I didn't realize this. So on the OG one, like mm -hmm. the fingerprint reader is not a button. It's just yeah, it's like, like a, a touch surface or whatever. Yeah, it's an actual button now. Like it's the power so what button. Is the, oh, it's a power button. Okay. Yeah, so, that's okay. That's okay. Um, I, it's one of those things like if you like this thing, you're probably going to like this thing. But the camera, yeah. it, like I, I know you're giving up camera quality, but if you're buying a Surface Duo for the camera, you're already buying the wrong device. Uh, yeah. Like the, it, it's just, yep. and then there's no, uh, yeah, the other really annoying thing. So they put like the kitchen sink in here, right? Snapdragon 888, uh, mm -hmm. performance, no issue, battery life, no issue, but there's no wireless charging on it though. <laughs> so what I put into my car to go, sure. it doesn't, it doesn't charge. Um, yeah. so I don't know. It's a, it sounds great. I, I, um, I wish I like maybe it, I'll order one now. It's uh, you're really selling it. I am really selling it. Well, it, I wrote like I think five times in the review, like for the right person who knows what they're getting, it's a good device. Meaning, like if you were looking at the Galaxy Fold Z and thinking, ah, that may be it. Like this, you should look at this. If you were looking at an iPhone, probably not looking at this. So as long as you know what you're going for, like it's really well built. Obviously, the, so, the massive caveat though is we don't know about software updates because there are some software hangups on this thing already. So. Yeah, and we well we do know what they've done so far, which right. is nothing. Right. Um, so here here's the problem. I, I, I there's this promise in our industry of hybrid devices where you can take one thing and replace two things with it. Mm -hmm. 
And in this case, the two things might be a, a, I'll call it a mini tablet or a tablet and a phone. Yep. The problem with hybrid devices has always been that in one or more of those scenarios, it's that hybrid devices lack luster. So I've, I, I wrote this years ago. I wrote an updated version of it a couple of years ago, but I have this notion of like the right tool for the job. And you, you try to contort things to do everything. It's like using an iPad as a productivity machine. Mm -hmm. I know it works for some people, but for the vast majority of laptop users, it's like you buy all these dongles and keyboards and all this junk, and it's like I, this is just not as efficient. And in this case, I feel like this is another example of that. Like the dream is still alive. We, we, we'd love to have that one thing that does two things, but it just doesn't do one of those things well. And I think when you talk, to, I know for this is a fact, if you talk to people buying new smartphones, especially people who are buying um, flagship class smartphones that cost $1,000 or whatever, phot phot uh, photograph, Jesus, speaking like a, like a Dutch person, photography. Uh, photography is job one. Mm -hmm. It's, it, you know, you, you have to have that and then you look at the rest of it, you know? And I, and like, you know, I, I, like I keep, I'm a broken record when it comes to service duo, but Microsoft seems to think there's some, um, point to a dual screen device. They've never ever <laughs> justified it, but they, and my feeling was, well, we'll see what the first year looks like. Maybe people say, Hey, look, it does this thing. Amazing. Like you could make an argument that, uh, you can play like a Xbox cloud gaming game on mm -hmm. one screen, have the touch controls in the bottom. That's, that is pretty cool. I admit that. Mm -hmm. But that's not a reason to spend a thousand bucks on a device or whatever it costs. Yeah, because, and, um, you know, like this thing is a hundred bucks. Yeah, right, right. And then that phone you have that you stick in there is about a million times better than this other phone. And that that's just the problem. It's always the problem. And it doesn't mean that through iteration they can't get it there. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it, there's a clear path to Im improving the camera. I don't know about improving the wobbly, blah, 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 weirdness of the user experience of taking photos, whatever. But, um, you know, wireless charging, easy to add. <laughs> you know, we'll see. We'll see if it evolves and how it evolves. But um, I just, man, we people make bad money decisions in pursuit of a brand you know, mm -hmm. and I, I hate to see that. And, um, I just, I, I just don't get it. Here's the other thing. So there's, so there's two, two things from ahead with this, uh, because I wrote it on Petri, like I took a very specific, like, I think there is a, a good demographic, a very specific person who this is okay. excellent for hear me out on okay. this. Yep. And, and you'll laugh because it's very narrow, but I think it works. So okay. for an it professional who is given a phone by their company as mm -hmm. on call, I think this is a really good device for that. So your company says, okay. look, you're going to be on call a weekend. Here's the device because you can do more with this. We don't care about the camera. You just need to be able to log in and do that. How much does that thing cost? 1500 bucks. So explain to me why a laptop wouldn't be better than that. I'm not saying, I, I did say, I, <laughs> just, I, I just, we're talking about, the, you can't put a laptop in your pocket. For bucks, I could point you to 25 amazing laptops. Yeah. But if you're thinking about things that like, you would, know, the assumption would be that user would already have a laptop and they need an actual phone that they that can That user also already has a phone. Well, you know, I just, I, we, I, I'm, you know, I often mention the walk I go on with my mm -hmm. wife in the morning and how I bore her to tears with tech topics, which is not actually how it goes down every day. But the thing we talked about today was smartphones. And this was her, she brought it up. Wow. We were talking about, and I said, you know, the, the interesting thing, and I'm going to write, I'm actually going to write something about this topic, but it was a completely misguided article in the New York Times about, it, when you spend $1,000 on a smartphone, you're giving up $17,000 in retirement savings. Yeah. This is wow. the dumb – that is – that's dumb. But anyway, I mentioned my neighbor the other day who has a Windows 8.1 computer wondering if he can upgrade to Windows 11. Mm -hmm. So you're a, a human being who has had this computer for six, seven, eight years. It's time to upgrade. Maybe that computer costs 1000 bucks, 1500 bucks even. Uh, if you use it for that amount of time, you can kind of justify it if you actually use it. But the smartphone thing, the, the equation is even more basic than that. Every, we're at the point now where everyone has to have a smartphone. They have mm -hmm. to. And it is really easy to justify the monthly cost of something that you're going to use for two, three, four years, uh, maybe more for some people, even if it's 1000 bucks, even if it's 1500 bucks, you know, $1,000 smartphone over two years is probably, what, 25 bucks a month, 30 bucks a month, something like that. I mean, this is the most no-brainer money that anyone could spend. Um, so you can justify these things very easily um i justifying that thing you have to contort yourself like you just did which oh, is yeah, fine 
with trying to find a use case for it. Here's the other um, here's the other little fun nugget that most people won't think about. So Service Duo One, real easy to use one hand, right? You fold it back like this, right? And yeah, yeah. this is honestly probably fine. You're right. When you when you put a giant goiter on the back, um, yeah. this becomes now there's like this gap, which uh, it's not the like it's hard to explain, but there's a pretty significant difference in feel between the Duo One and the Duo Two. I mean, you can see how big that gap gets there. Yeah, it's it's um, look obviously with the first generation device, one of the big complaints is the camera quality for mm -hmm. sure. So well, okay, we'll fix the cameras. Well, how do we do that in a device this thin? You have to have a camera bump. Well, how do we do that with the it just it stops making sense. Yeah. You know, I don't think it ever made sense personally. I I, I know my feelings are clear on this, but um, I just I don't I I've never been swayed by this. You know, you could watch an Apple event, like even an Apple event, like the MacBook thing that happened the other day. I was like, I am not spending two to five thousand dollars on one of these computers. I don't need it. Mm -hmm. I don't want it. But you get caught up in the moment of it where you're like, man, that's really cool. Like, oh, look at those numbers. Oh my God, you know, it's it's a nice looking machine or whatever. And then when it's when the dust settles, hopefully your mind is in the right place. And in my case, it's like, yeah, I don't need this. And I can just stop thinking about it. And the problem with the Duo is I never once was like, oh, maybe, maybe. Mm -hmm. I love devices, dude. I spend several thousand dollars a year on personal electronics of my own money. And I there's just nothing. I've never once looked at this. And I am, I'm as far up the butt of the Microsoft ecosystem as you can be as a human being. And I've never once looked at this and thought, maybe. It just doesn't make any sense. I still like it. Okay. <laughs> you like, <laughs> well, it, you like I, shiny things. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's neat from the aspect of it's different. And it's, and it's well made and they're doing something different. Doesn't mean it's practical. I it's, think the productivity angle is the wrong approach um, yeah. for this kind of device. Like if you look at Samsung, what they're doing with the two different types of flip phones that they, or um, you know, folding phones, mm -hmm. you know, someone like my wife looks at that and because we've had this conversation. She's like, you know, the little one that it, the, the flip yeah. where it's, it becomes like a little makeup compact case you could put it, put in your pocket. You know, she likes the idea of that. Mm -hmm. But what she really likes is that folding phone because you can, she, you know, we're people, we're 50 something years old now. We wear reading glasses when we go to a restaurant so we can see the menu. Like she wants, she, she likes the notion of opening the thing up and getting a bigger screen. Mm -hmm. It'd be great for mapping in the car. It'd be great for reading. It'd be great for watching a movie. Um, it's, it, there's these really clear use cases and yeah, maybe it would be great for, um, editing a word document when you're on a train heading into the city or something and you have 10 minutes or whatever. Yeah. It'd be good for that too. But the thing about that device is when you close it, there's a screen on the outside. It's just like a phone, you know? Paul, and there's I, a screen look, on the outside. It's all you got to do is you got to angle <laughs> yes, it. Okay. And so right. here's the other so thing. By, dude, what that thing is, that's the touch bar of external screens. <laughs> like it's it's not, yeah, I get it's a screen, but yeah. I mean, you know what I'm saying. We, you can use it as a smartphone and it's a smartphone. I'm not, I mean, by the way, I'm not saying the Samsung stuff is perfect. I mean, we're, we're what, on Gen 2 or 3 now. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure it has a ways to go still, but... I mean, I, I, I look at something like that and I think, okay, I, that I could see as that hybrid use case thing, you know, um, that thing you're holding. It's like, yeah, it's a fun little Frankenstein monster experiment, but I, I just don't, I don't know how you get from idea to conception on something like this. I don't understand how somewhere along the line, someone with common sense in a position of power didn't say, no, that doesn't make sense. Go back and do it until it makes sense. Or Here, stop doing the it. the other... <clears throat> Fun little thing. So <laughs> so you hit the power button and like right now I can see it says 922. You gotta yeah, move it over. I can't see it. Yeah. It says 922 right here. Yep. So let's say you just pick up the phone off the table and you're like, all right, what time is it? Oh, I, you gotta like it doesn't do the orientation. Oh boy. Yep. 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 That's okay. When I when I lift my wrist to look at my um Fitbit, I would say five times out of ten, it says please configure mobile payments or whatever the message is. <laughs> So it's please configure mobile payments o'clock. Why do you think I lifted my wrist? Do you, do you think I wanted to look at that? Or did you think... You should just get an Apple Watch. Your life would be better. Yeah, except I'd have to use an Apple product. and then I'm yeah. still surprised they haven't... Their next right. thing needs to make that a standalone product. And I think they'd sell yep. quite a few to people oh like God. yourself. I see. I would consider it, even with the battery life, um, for that. Because I uh, because of the health and workout stuff, you know? Yeah. The fitness stuff. Whatever. Yeah, so, absolutely. I'd consider it. 
Anyways, more confusing things than um, Surface Duo 2 to Paul Thrott is the Android apps have arrived on Windows 11. Yeah. Um, so I was just I'll writing that up when you called. Up. And let me tell you something. Um, it's better than the Europhone nonsense, for sure. Mm -hmm. This is not a seamless experience at all. And I'm gonna, I'm just going to refer to my notes because I, or what I wrote because I, I was just writing this. This will be on the site before anyone sees the show, I would imagine. Um. First of all, from an onboarding perspective, it's not seamless in any way, shape, or form. Like Microsoft very clearly pre-announced this because of the walking cat leak. And everyone excitedly downloaded this build thinking I'll reboot, come into Windows, open the store, and there will be all the apps. Mm -hmm. And that's not what happened. Mm. Um, there's no indication at all of anything going on in the store. So you can update the store app. You can kind of, you know, I don't know if I, I actually... As of this moment, don't know how it will work legitimately, but Raphael came to me and said, hey, if you want to get this going now, here's the file you need. And I downloaded the file, installed it, rebooted, did a bunch of configuration stuff. You have to have Hyper-V, you got to have, um, you know, BIOS-based virtualization enabled, et cetera, et cetera. So it took a while. And then um, it, when you get all that stuff done, there's an, and, uh, what do you call it, Windows subsystem for Android app, which looks like the settings app in Windows 11, but it's just the settings for that one thing. And you can launch like a file explorer style experience for accessing the files in the virtual machine. The virtual machine has to run before you can do anything. So including the app store, by the way. So um, I don't remember how I got the app store. Actually, now that I'm saying this, I think I'm, did I get that from the store? I think I did get it from the store or maybe it's just installed. I don't, I have no idea, dude. I'm sorry. I really don't even know mm -hmm. how this came on my computer, but the Android app store, the Amazon app store for Android is an Android app. And of course, the Android apps are Android apps. Before you can run any of those apps, you have to start up the VM. And I don't know if you've ever started up a VM before, but uh, you know, it's mm -hmm. not super fast. It's not super slow either. It's not like it used to be. But you have to. You, this has to happen every time. I, I'm not aware of a setting that will just have this thing run at startup. So, if you think you're going to be running Android apps a lot, it's kind of a weird non um, non seamless experience. You of course acquire your Android apps through the Android app store, not through the Windows store, the Microsoft store. Um, it's not that store in a store experience that Microsoft described. Now, maybe it will become one over time. Mm -hmm. I, the way they described it was you'll just see Android apps in the store and, you know, I don't know. It's kind of like, you know, if you right click on something and start, and you say uninstall, depending on the type of app you are selecting, you're going to get a different experience. And so I would imagine that the way this will work is you will see Android apps in the store. And if you click to go install, the Android App Store will come up and it will do it from there, I would imagine, something like that. But right mm. now, you, it's just a downloadable app. It's an app store. You select the app you, know, the app you want, you download it, whatever. So I downloaded a couple of things, uh, the Kindle app, for example. And I guess there's 50 apps in there. Uh, a lot of them are games, as you would expect. Um, it works. It works fine. You know, it's fine. But man, I, fr from step zero to step 21 <laughs> to get this thing going, Granted, I, I think Microsoft pre-announced it. I don't think it was baked, you know, if you will. Uh, man, but it, what a what a process to go through. And then you run the thing and you're like, yeah, there, there it is. <laughs> you know? Um, so anyway, I'll write it out. I'll, I'll screenshots and blah, 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 whatever. But it's just a lot of, um, a lot of stuff. Uh, yeah. Actually, excuse me. There is a continuous option in settings that will... Mm -hmm. Keep it doesn't say start it. Well, see, it still doesn't say start it at boot time, but maybe it just keeps it running after you close an app or something. I don't know. It's just not, you know, you get that little, it, it comes up as a window and then it's like, you know, and then the, the thing you wanted to run runs. And then that thing, well, I guess it's not there. Anymore. The VM window does go away, but I don't know, dude. It's okay. I keep going back to it's like other the may, maybe a podcast app maybe I don't know what well like, I I I think there's a case for what I'll call you like utility apps that mm -hmm. if even if they're running in like a little phone looking window kind of makes sense like I use the Philips Hue thing as an example even though it's not called Philips Hue anymore um, man it's just all a bunch of garbagey games uh, for the most part it's it's kind of strange but the other thing is this app <laughs> because you know it's an Android app right it doesn't respect the color mode you chose in windows so it's all you, my face is lit up right now probably because it's white mm -hmm. <laughs> and i'm running i run dark mode and it's like um 
<laughs> what is this thing? You can search. Like, it's funny. I'm looking at the main interface, and I don't see any app that I would actually want to install. It's seriously, it's like Las Vegas slots, Solitaire Grand something, PJ Masks, Big Fish Casino, PJ Clash Masks. of Kings. I mean, it's everybody like who's stunt. seen PJ Masks now has that theme song stuck in their head, and for that, I blame Therat. Oh, I don't. I've never even heard it's of a, it. Well, it's a newer-ish kids show. That's why it's. I got you. Okay. Yeah, it's um. And it is a garbagey selection of stuff. I mean, I'm I'm trying to find anything. There's a comics app called Comics, you know, Kindle, right? Which mm-hmm. K- Kindle might literally be the only interesting app <laughs> in this thing. The Washington Post is there. Flight Tracker 24 is there twice. BBC Sounds. You might have seen like the people who were doing this initially. I think we're having the same. Pr- if you saw anyone on Twitter talking about this, like um. People sideloaded apps, right? So mm-hmm. I know Raphael, I think I recommended he do this and he did. I think he sideloaded uh, Fortnite, for example. Um, I think people sideloaded Spotify. Those yeah. apps are not in the store. <laughs> not today, anyway. Um, so it's 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 not a great experience um, today. I, I, it's better than your phone, for sure. I mean... My phone's honestly, a duo, too, though. No, no, I mean... <laughs> The Your Phone app, the horribly named Your Phone app. Um, get a lot of lackluster Android stuff today, basically. Sorry. 